So before we get started on this HyperSpark install, I think I caught a mistake. Um, and being as I'm not a Ford guy, um, I was doing my research and that's how I caught it. Um, I originally kind of assumed, uh, well, let me step back for a second. I didn't build this motor and I didn't set up, I didn't set up anything. This is just freshly rebuilt by the guy right before I bought it. And, um, I had kind of originally just assumed by looking at this that number one cylinder was at the rear because that's how it's wired and it runs fine this way. And uh, I got to doing a little bit of research um, about putting, I want to put this thing in top dead center and I want to make sure I've got it in the right position. So I was just kind of assuming, well, I got the rotor pointed towards number one, I'll be fine. But I kind of am OCD a little bit and so I started researching these motors and they all say number one is up front. I'm going damn I'm starting to think about it I'm like man I wonder if they put the distributor in 180 out so I came back out and looked at it and I'll be darned if they did so they that's the only explanation for it the distributor's got to be 180 degrees out because they got number six is uh number six is up front here and that's the order that we're in so I guarantee they put the distributor in 180 degrees out and that was stupid of them um, it'll run fine like this because you've just switched You've, you've switched the positions of everything 180 degrees so it's still the right firing order it's just front it's just it's just back to front now <laughs> so I'm gonna flip that around um, I'm gonna flip that around when I uh, when I set this up um, so it's just a quick little thing a mistake that they made that I just caught hyper spark install uh, with the sniper 1100 um, got the components on the bench here this is kind of the all-out version you can do a hyper spark without the CD box and without this particular coil um, they do make other components to do it I figure if I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go all for it you know hotter spark is is better and uh, I don't like the way that this thing runs at low low rpm so we're gonna give it we're gonna give it the juice you know, we're gonna just gonna feed it everything that we got. And we're gonna put in the CD box, HyperSpark distributor. I got a set of superconductor uh, wires. Um, honestly, I, I like Taylor's better, but um, I just I did the order from Holly, and it was just easier to buy these. I've used these before. There's nothing wrong with them. They're actually really good quality wires, but the crimping tool that they give you to do these just stinks. I've done superconductor wires a few times now. And it, they just you know they never come out right i it'd probably help if i bought a correct crimping tool but they give you one you know they give you this job which this thing just doesn't work well so anyways uh so just these are the components real quick um so we're going to start figuring out where stuff goes i, I think i already kind of had it figured out just by looking at it last night so i'm going to go over where i'm going to put this in my 66 mustang um maybe it'll be helpful for you folks because this stuff takes up a lot of real estate. You know, you don't realize how big this coil is um, until you got it sitting here in your hand. But I mean, look at look at my hand next to this thing. I mean, that'll tell you how big it is. It, you know, <laughs> so it's going to go on the shock tower or next to the shock tower, actually, um, on the driver's side. This is going to kind of go below the battery tray. Um, that's the most opportune place for it because it needs power, and I can bring the coil wire from this over because. Uh, the power you, you have power coming in here you feed the coil directly off of this because it's capacitive discharge so that higher higher voltage feeds into the coil it gives you a real hot spark and then the distributor um, it has a pigtail and it's got a little harness that they gave me um, uh, this has to go directly to the fuel injection unit because you this tells the fuel injection unit where you are the fuel injection unit outputs to the uh, white wire here which is the which is the points input into here it basically tells this one to fire so the fuel injection processes it processes the input data the output data is tell this thing to fire lights off the coil um, the first thing that I did notice is the way that I routed my wiring on my vehicle um, that harness that has the signal wires from the EFI definitely should be on the other side of the car and that's not how I wired it um, so I realized that the pigtail that they gave me for this is it goes typically to one of those typical MSD uh, setups with the two wires and the little black connectors. This is a real common thing with MSD. Um, 
the wire coming out of the EFI is only, I don't know, 18 inches long. And the, and the pigtail on this is very short. Um, so it wouldn't have made it. Now, it just so happens that I have, because I've got so much crap laying around here, uh, it so happens that I have a crank trigger extension cable um, to be able to get it over to the other side. So I happen to have one of these laying around from an old, uh, it's actually not a, I think if you look it up, it's a crank trigger extension cable, but this is from an old 6AL box, the old ones that didn't have the, don't have the big weather pack connector on them. They were kind of individually connectorized. That's where this one came from. So you got one of those laying around, it'll work. Um, you want to use one of these. Don't cut this and extend, don't, don't extend this and cut it because these are twisted. And I just dropped it, so now I got to pick it up. <laughs> You notice it's twisted in here. That actually cuts down on the noise because um, this is a signal wire. So you want them to be twisted. So in theory, you could cut this and, you know, you could you could cut this and extend it, but you'd have to take two wires and twist them together. Um, there is a way to do that, but, um, you know, to, to coil them together so it uh, reduces the interference. But hell, for I think it's like 16 bucks you can get one of these extensions if you need it. So either that or route the uh, route the harness the right way. You know, I didn't know any better at the time, and it worked better for my install. So anyways, these are the components. Um, we're just, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get these installed, and I'll show you guys where they ended up. Um, I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to show you, you know, me drilling holes and putting screws in. You don't need to see that, but I'll show you where everything kind of ended up, and then we'll go over the wiring. So let's take a look at what we got so far. Uh, we mount on the coil here. Uh, I used nut certs on this one because I could get to it, so that's kind of nifty. They're threaded. Um, brought the cable around from the CD box, which is mounted down here. It seems to be a decent home for it. It uh, it fits there. It's a little bit tight with the harness down here. I'm going to have to route it so it doesn't rub on the battery tray support, but um, that'll be fine. Then, So I got my power wires. I'm going to route one of them probably up to the starter solenoid or back to the battery just because I'm running out of real estate. Um, and then uh, the ground, of course, will go to the block. And we've got two more wires coming up this direction from the CD box, coil trigger, and power on signal ignition, power on signal to the box. Um, and then we've got the old distributor, um, which, of course, is in 180 out. Um, so uh we'll fix that it's already at top dead center number one i've already got that uh already got that set up um, i put the crank down at zero um probably can't see it but uh let's get this to focus yep there you can see it the white mark um is at zero that's close enough for me you know there's some folks that did probably pull the valve cover or they you know Put a screwdriver and the spark plug hole look it's it's close enough it's a new balancer so it's not slipped or anything so it, it's going to be close for this motor it's not that critical um so we're going to pop the, the old dizzy out of here and we're going to uh pop the hyper spark one in um it's a helical cut so it's going to want to twist when it comes out so just kind of take that into account for where you want your number one to be i'm going to put number one where it's supposed to be which is down here somewhere uh it, it, in all reality it doesn't matter you can put it wherever you want um it's just the old cap on this was numbered and they had it backwards for whatever reason they they had it backwards so i gotta pull this distributor out i'm gonna pull the uh, vacuum line out i gotta cap the vacuum line that goes into the sniper i've got the original plug for that that came with it so i'll just plug that back up and then we'll get the distributor in and i'll show you how to phase it so let's read all the rules that we're going to break. So before this thing goes in uh, on this engine, apparently, because I've never worked on Ford's on a Ford 200 before, uh, this has an O-ring seal, a little different from a Chevy that's got a gasket in here. That's fine. Um, Chevy's got a gasket here, and it's got O-rings on it as well. Um, so, uh, you know, that's a little different. It looks to me, they gave me two of them, and there's nothing in the instructions, of course, and they look like they're different sizes. Um, uh, but I can tell that's where it goes. I don't, you know, I'm going to look at the old one when I pull it out, but when I pull it out, I haven't pulled it out yet. So let's look at what rules we're going to break. Distributor gear break-in procedure. 
Failure to observe the following precautions can cause premature failure of the distributor gear. Gear should be thoroughly coated in the supplied lube. Yep, check. We're going to do that. No synthetic oils should be used during the distributor gear break-in period. How many distributors have I put in with uh, synthetic oil in the engine? A lot. Um, it's zinc fortified, zinc and phosphorus fortified, so there's... Uh, so there's uh, um, turbo films. Um, I think it'll be fine. Um, this thing isn't cranking out all that much oil pressure either. So um, I'm not dropping my oil. That's up to you guys. Um, I'm certainly not going to throw away $100 worth of oil. Um, standard 30 or 40 weight. I'm running 40. Highly modified engines. Nope. Uh, if equipped, oil filter. Nope. And monitor the gear wear. Yeah, I usually pull them once or twice just to make sure. This is a flat tappet cam that I know it is because they don't make roller cams for the user. You have to super modify the engine to even run a roller in them, which is unfortunate because I love running rollers. But um, this is going to be fine. This is just a melanized gear that MSD ships it with. Um, you know, it'll break in fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, so without further ado, we're going to put the O-ring on here. We're going to get it lubed up and I'm going to go drop it in. All right, let's take Gander at the dingle hopper here. So Holly's got kind of this fancy idea that they came up with. Of course, they jumped on it and patented it. Um, I don't blame them. I would have too. Back in the old days, you know, I'm going to sound like, uh, old man river here for a second, but back in the old days, you used to have to phase the distributor uh, you'd have to get an old cap and drill a hole in it and use a timing light and get it centered. And you have to get a phasing rotor and adjust the phasing rotor to be optimal. Otherwise, your gap would be too far, depending on where your spark advance was in relation to the cap uh, terminal. It was a real pain. They came up with this really cool thing here where it just it locks on there uh, on top of the distributor housing and the rotor and what you do is you you center this over the rotor well why am i going to explain why don't i just do it so right we put this over here and you'll notice it's not seated all the way and what we're going to have to do is rotate the distributor housing until this pops down all the way and when that pops down all the way it's phased it's that easy and supposedly it works i've never used one of these before but i'm trying to do this one-handed so we'll see but let me see just rotating it until it well it's very difficult to do this one-handed <laughs> well this is just not gonna work they have this adapter on here too which kind of makes it a pain in the ass but this sits on top of there this is just like the worst video ever I can't even show you guys something simple if I had a tripod, this wouldn't be a problem. Let me set you guys down. Look at that. Built-in tripod on the car. Alright, so we're going to hold this and we're going to rotate it. There it is. See, it just popped in. That's it. It's now centered. We lock it there until we, until we go to adjust it and we'll do that later because we're going to put a timing light on it and make sure that it's dead on so that there'll be a little bit of adjustment but this is extremely close more than close enough to make it run so i'm going to lock the distributor down in this position right now and that's it this little thing's done its job now the other thing is there's a little notch down here on the plastic they give you you're supposed to put just a mark on here with some sharpie just to signify that that's where the number one terminal is so we're going to go ahead and do that, and we're, I'm going to lock it down. We're going to mark it. I'm going to throw the cap on here, and then it's all it is is wiring at that point. And the thing that's going to take me the longest is building all the spark plug wires because I've got to build those from scratch. So um, uh, let me get that sealed up, and then uh, we'll do some wiring. Man, I hate tailoring my own spark plug wires, and I'm pretty good at doing these MSD ones now that I've done them several times, but they still take me an hour and a half. Um, these went a little bit better than the ones on my DIS did with the uh, LS style connectors. Those ones are terrible. They're, the LS connectors are horrible. They, they, at least the HEI ones, they've been pretty consistent and they seem to work okay. So that's the hard part, quite honestly. The rest of this is just, we got to wire up the 
unit over here we're going to get our hot and our ground we're going to take this over we're going to get our ignition and we're going to put the coil trigger into the coil trigger wiring harness over here and then um, we're going to get the distributor harness going on over there with the two signal wires and the ignition source which i'm just going to tie into what was my coil lead it's a hot lead now there's no uh i took out the resistor wire some time back so this is just 12 volt ignition source so we're gonna get that hooked up to the distributor um, we're gonna have to tap into it as well for the uh, the uh, the ignition box and um, that should pretty much do it um, it's really not all that big of a deal the other thing I'm gonna do and I'm gonna tell you guys about right now if you're converting like I am from a coil signal take the wire out don't leave it in here it's like a big antenna and it'll pick up noise even if you're not using it so we're gonna slip that out of there uh, at the same time okay so let's go over the wiring um, just too hard to get in here and I'm trying to feed stuff through the old harness and pull stuff out it'd be too hard to show you but I'm gonna explain what we got it is not complicated there are three wires for the distributor okay with the three wires you've got two signal and one power from the ignition switch. The power simply just powers the HyperSpark distributor. The other two wires go up, and that's what I was talking about with that extension that I used from my old 6AL, because it wasn't long enough to make it from here all the way over to where my harness is. So I brought that signal over here. I've got it tucked up underneath here, but it's, it's this cable right here. You can see the crank signal, crank positive, negative signal. It's plugged into that, it's that two wire plug. I've got my points white wire signal over here and the red power goes back over. I tied it in where I got where I picked up the wire for the HyperSpark power as well because the CD box needs a signal as well, an ignition signal for uh, to, to turn it on, right? Um, I've got my um, almost comical set of grounds down there now on the uh, ground cable for the battery. I've got my other set of comical connections for my hot up here on the starter solenoid um, I'm probably gonna have to get a positive uh, post terminal for this because this is just getting to be a joke um, there was enough threads to get the nut but I don't like it so I'm probably gonna fix that up a little bit okay I got my coil going across down here I put some p-clips in to secure it it's a little short which is annoying but it's secured going up to my coil okay that's it's this is all connectorized too so I probably could extend this one that uh, probably won't hurt anything um, so that pretty much covers the wiring on this um, you know like I said I was I'm using my coil feed my old coil feed to supply the distributor and the uh, and the EFI or the uh, sorry the um, CD box uh, with an on signal um, really actually very simple setup here so let's uh let's go into the car we'll turn it on uh the we'll turn it to the on position we'll get it set up for hyper spark because um, it's set up for uh coil right now so let's go do that okay let's get this thing set up so since this is already um set up for um coil I'm gonna have to go in here and I'm gonna have to change it so we're gonna go home and um, I think tuning and system and ignition setup and it's set for coil minus right now so let's go ahead and get that switched over to HyperSpark distributor save okay so it wants me to cycle the ignition I want to go in and uh, I want to set this up. So it's currently cranking and cranking timing is 15 degrees. Ignition timing at idle is 15. Um, ignition timing at cruise is 30. Let's just go with these base settings for right now. These are fine. I mean, this will get it running. Um, I'm thinking that that's probably a little bit much advanced to crank, but let's see. 
Let's see if it, uh, let's see if she lights off. Okay, so it lit, it lit off. One miss there. So, um, let me get the timing light on it. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to lock this thing at 15 degrees. And then, um, we're going to check the sink with the distributor. So, um, we're going to make sure that the distributor alignment is in fact at 15 degrees on the crank. Okay, so we got the timing light on it. I'm going to go to uh, static timing here. Um, so if you go, um, if you're here, you go tuning, system, static timing. Um, I'm going to set it to 14 degrees because that's where my last mark is on here. Um, so we're going to set it to 14.0, save, and um, I'm going to hit set. And that should lock it at 14 degrees. So now we're going to go check it. So let's get out and check it. And we're going to see how far off it is. I'm sure it won't be perfect. And uh, yeah, it's off by about a degree. Um, it's going to be hard to see it in the video, but you, you might see it there. So I'm going to loosen up the distributor and we're just going to back that up. So let me go ahead and get that set and then we'll check it out afterwards. Okay, so I went ahead and I phased it or adjusted it. And uh, you might be able to see in the video there we're right on... Uh, right on 14 degrees so uh, we're set now so the next thing is going to be building a custom timing table for it this is good it'll get it running but um, I'm gonna have to build a custom table that's really gonna work for this particular motor the base timing curve is is really just no better than a regular mechanical advance um, so that'll take some time to do I'll, I'll have to test drive it and, but uh, we got it up and running so uh, you know, the HyperSpark really was no trouble at all. It seemed to just fire right up. Okay, so let's talk about this thing a little bit. I just drove it. Um, it has basically a basic timing curve in it right now. And um, this thing barks the tires. Well, tire. <laughs> it will actually bark the tire offline now. It never would do that before. The timing curve is so much better and much, much more stable. And um, the other thing to note is that it's a hell of a lot smoother in gear now it idles just so much better so absolutely worth the money totally worth doing um, not difficult at all um, so highly recommend it um, there was somebody uh, one of the admins on the vintage six forum offered to uh, give me a timing table that already works for this setup with this uh, for this setup with this cam you know with a stock cam in it and this head um, with an auto trans right because all those things factor into your timing curve He offered to help me out and give me a give me a table So I don't even have to tune it myself because normally that takes weeks if you don't have a dyno um, It takes a lot of time, but he uh, He offered to help me out with that. So that's gonna be awesome um, But in the meantime this base timing curve is is a hell of a lot better than the dual advance that was in it So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, this was a fun one didn't take long at all um, no real frustrations or anything. So uh, we'll catch you next time.